Let's take a look at the engineering design process. What's the problem that Emily had? Put yourself in Emily's position. Dorothy? She needs help because she keeps forgetting to fill up the sheep's trail. That's right. She's got an imagined idea that allows her to feed her sheep, yeah? But she can still do what? What's this brings her a lot of pleasure in life? Go ahead, Evan. Riding Flash. Riding flash or horse. So let's take a look at we, what we tried to do yesterday. We had to make a circuit yesterday, and what did the circuit have to have on it? Go ahead. Um, the wire. It had to have a wire, and what was the goal of yesterday's circuit? What, did, what two devices did it have to activate? Go ahead. Um, a buzzer and a light. A buzzer and a light. So troubleshooting is a big, big part of electrical engineering because sometimes just uh, a, a battery being weak can be the culprit. What are other things that might have caused our system not to work? You may have connected it wrong. What else? The buzzer maybe didn't have so many batteries. Yeah, the buzzer may have been um, not working right. Yeah, it might have been a faulty buzzer. So today, we're going to have to exercise this word. You can talk about it all you want, but you have to show that you're persevering because everyone has to come up with a system that's going to work in light today. Can someone read this out loud? There's a couple big words in there. How can I use all my acquired knowledge about circuits, schematic diagrams, and electrical engineering to design an alarm circuit that someone else can build? Okay, so can you translate this? What does that, what's that saying to you? Um, it means like, how can I use this to help me do, like, do something or make something? That's right, how can I design this circuit so I know it's gonna work? But look at the last couple words in here. <clears throat> what do we want our schematic diagram to be able to do for humanity? Make sure someone else can build it. That's right. The, the, the schematic diagram has to be read by a host of people. Next year, we'll take your drawings that you did, and I'll have kids build from your plans. Because your circuit drawings were so uh, well done yesterday, your whole schematics were so well done, um, that I could build something off of it. You're going to imagine your system that you want to use to water the sheep. Okay, you're going to make a plan by sketching it out, that's your schematic, and then we create the actual uh, gizmo, and then if it doesn't work, you're going to have to improve upon it. So when the trough is full of water, which way will this tilt? <clears throat> this way or this way? Go ahead. Um, this way. It should tilt this way. So if the trough is full of water, it should sit on your table like this. So as it's full of water, this end's going to stay up in the air. As the sheep come in and out of the barn throughout the day, what's going to happen to the quantity of the water? Go ahead. It's going to get lower. The quantity of the water gets lower, and then what, what do you think will happen to this system? Um, that side is going to go up, and then the other side is going to go down. So it looks something like that. And then at some point throughout your design process, you're going to remove the beads to simulate the water coming out, and we're going to see if this system can close your circuit to activate your light and your buzzer. So a clue for you is to find out some type of material that you can put on here that's going to activate your whole circuit. I want you to sketch your schematic diagram for a parallel series with a, a light and a buzzer, your battery, and somewhere along here there has to be a way that we can get this part of the lever to activate the switch. So. The clue that you guys just uncovered without me saying anything is that you need to put some type of conducting material on the bottom of this so that when this passes, uh, when your circuit passes underneath it, as it closes down, we're closing a switch and the circuit's now complete. So if you uh, accomplish your goal, what should happen to your circuit? The light should turn on and your buzzer should go off. That's right. Your light and buzzer should turn off. So I'll give you, say, three to five minutes to complete this task. Go ahead and design your own schematic diagram. Alright, so at this point what I'd like you guys to do is to collaborate with each other and I want you to, do, to agree as engineers, not as contractors, I want you to agree as to whose system you want to uh, build, okay? And I'm going to come around to check to see uh, if your system makes sense, if it's logical, and then I'll give you the green light to begin uh, building your system. Yeah.
Why don't we have Because that is a second battery. Yeah, why, why do you need that? So it would be one does it work? Where um, we're drawing the final circle. Okay. You could draw it. All right. So let's pretend I'm the inspector for the town. If you're an electrical engineer, someone has to come and take a look at your drawings to make sure that when you wire a house or a building up, everything's done right and is done what they say to code. So I acted as the inspector today, the town inspector, and everybody got the stamp from, from town hall to go ahead and construct. So if you have a paper in front of you, that means you're taking the role of the electrical engineer. The rest of the group are contractors. Everyone's going to get their box full of every part they need. And this time, you're going to draw your circuit diagram, which is exactly what you have in front of you on this piece of paper to scale. To scale means to life size. Once your circuit diagram is drawn through the use of using these symbols, which are in your box, through the use of tape putting into place, okay? Um, then I'll give you the trough and you can uh, hook a, a conductor to the bottom of it, some conducting material, and then we can see if the switch will get activated, okay? okay. So if you don't have a kit at your desk, you can go over to the, uh, to the table and grab one. Let's think. So we have to start drawing. Okay, I'll start drawing. Okay, okay there's so many of the same symbols. That must be the lipo coder. That. No, that is. Yeah. How many light bulbs hold the light? I don't know. Let's check this paper. Wait, we need two. Two of each thing. There's two batteries. Two of each. Ten now. Eleven now. Ah, uh, so I that was the that was the nine. So there's, there's only two clips inside, which means if we oh, okay. if we only had a little bit of water left, she's gonna have to fill in more. It worked. Yeah. Did you put a conductor on the bottom yet? Take these out. You need to put a So then try connecting the same this battery to this one. And then this battery to the machine. Oh yeah, it's not coming back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So is your system in parallel? Um, we are, we're trying and you to think work. you'll have enough power off of one battery to activate both of those? We're still thinking. I think okay. it could. To keep the circuit moving, what else do we need on this side? Four and a half. How long? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Now, we're getting close, I think. Okay, so we have a good buzzer. Now we need a light in parallel with the buzzer. So you can unhook that for now. And we need to have a light in parallel and then somehow incorporate your trough in the system. Guys, we have a system that works over here. The trough is empty. They completed the circuit. The paper clip made the connection to complete the circuit and their light went on. Contractors, I know you're fully engaged and that's a good thing. But lunch is coming up. Do you guys have fun? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. You think you learned a lot? Yes! Yeah. Did that take the mystery out of electricity, meaning like how, how we get light? Now you understand the concept of it? Yeah. Now you know how things, how things are made and how things work. Yeah. All right? And that's part of the joy of discovery in life is that even when you're an old person at 90 years old, you never stop learning and discovering things. Yeah. All right. So let's call it a day. We'll see you guys. Good job. Nice job. What's going to happen in any of these design challenges is you're going to be faced with a challenge and you're not going to succeed. You're going to be faced with failure. And truly what you need to all learn is that when you're faced with failure, you need to find some way to uh, reconfigure yourself or your logic or your thought process. So in the particular case of with electrical circuitry, it's fraught with all kinds of problems from a loose connection to a bulb that might be burnt out to a battery that's old and doesn't hold a charge any longer. So perseverance, you know, in, in, in a fourth grade science class is a really important lesson because we're all going to be faced with failure, but it's how we respond to the failure that allows us to achieve our goals in the end.